Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Lately I've been seeing a lot of videos popping up on YouTube making big claims about getting visa sponsorship for farm work in Australia. However, the reality is that it's not so simple, and many of these videos are giving misleading or downright false information. In today's video, I want to provide a realistic look at getting farm jobs in Australia and what visa options are actually available. There's a lot of misleading info out there. So my goal is to give you the real facts and expectations when it comes to doing agricultural work and getting visa sponsorship down under. Visa Sponsorship Reality First off, directly getting permanent residency or visa sponsorship from farm labor alone is extremely rare in Australia. While the agriculture industry is huge in Australia, it simply does not sponsor many visas compared to fields like tech, healthcare, engineering, etc. The reality is that for most backpackers and travelers, normal farm work like fruit picking or vegetable harvesting won't lead to direct sponsorship. I see these claims all over YouTube and blogs aimed at backpackers. They make it sound like you just need to contact any farm and you'll get a sponsorship. No worries. Mate, I hate to break it to you, but that is complete rubbish. The reality is that mainstream visas like the Skilled Work Regional Visa are meant for qualified professionals whose skills are in shortage in regional areas. We're talking doctors, engineers, accountants, not unskilled farmhands. Yes, there are ways to get employer sponsored from farm jobs, but they are very limited. I'll explain the viable options in a bit, but first, let's delve deeper into why most farm work does not lead to direct sponsorship. Why farms won't sponsor unskilled labor? See, the thing is, most farm labor jobs like fruit or vegetable picking, working in packing sheds, or doing odd jobs on cattle stations are considered low-skilled manual work. They require physical stamina, but not higher qualifications. For a farm to sponsor a visa, they need to prove that the role is skilled and that they tried but could not find a local Australian worker to fill it. That's a very hard case to make for seasonal fruit picking or sheep shearing jobs that Aussies readily do. There's also a bureaucratic hassle and costs involved with becoming an approved sponsor. Farms need to comply with training benchmarks and regulatory requirements. So if they can easily find locals, why go through that hassle for low-skilled roles? The requirements are more relaxed for regional areas with genuine skill shortages. But immigration keeps a close eye that the jobs truly require specialized skills and experience that can't be found locally. Let's say a farm wants to sponsor a visa for a farmhand. Immigration will look at the role very closely and ask questions like, is this a genuine skilled position or just general unskilled manual labor? What specialized qualifications, licenses, or experience does it require? Why can't the farm recruit an Australian for this role? What evidence do they have of labor market testing? Is the salary in line with industry standards for skilled work? Unskilled wages might raise red flags. Does the applicant have niche skills and experience that are urgently needed in the region? So unless you have legit in-demand skills, it's unlikely a farm will get approval to sponsor you directly. The farm really needs to prove to immigration that you have skills lacking in Aussies. And let's be honest, Aussies are not lacking when it comes to basic farm labor. The niche roles that may get sponsored directly are things like dairy farming. Specialists, agriculture technicians and mechanics, heavy machinery operators, livestock nutritionists, etc. These require legit qualifications and credentials beyond the average backpacker. Which visas can realistically get you farm work? All right, so mainstream sponsorship for unskilled farm labor is basically a no-go, but working on an Australian farm is still possible with the right visa program. Let's look at the realistic visa pathways. Working holiday visa. Now, the most popular visa for temporary farm work is the working holiday visa. This is a temporary visa that lets you live and work in Australia for up to a year. The work has to be short-term, like seasonal fruit picking or harvest jobs that backpackers often take on. A major benefit of the working holiday visa is that you can apply for a second year extension if you complete at least three months of work in regional Australia, such as on farms. So it's a great way to extend your time in Australia to fund travels or adventures. But again, the working holiday visa does not itself lead to permanent residency or direct sponsorship. It's only valid for up to two years maximum and is meant as a cultural exchange program for short-term work. Skilled visa options. If you do want to properly immigrate to Australia through farm work, the main pathway is getting a skilled work visa like the Skilled Independent Visa Subclass 189 or Skilled Regional Visa Subclass 491. But these have strict requirements. You need an occupation on the skilled occupation list like an agricultural consultant, crop farm manager, or agricultural scientist. Usually you need a relevant bachelor's degree or several years of directly related skilled work experience. Casual fruit picking does not count as skilled work that qualifies for these visas. You also often need a legitimate job offer from an employer willing to sponsor you. There's a rigorous vetting process they must pass too. 
So for these visas, you need proper full-time career-level work in agriculture, not just casual labor. If you have legit in-demand skills and qualifications, obtaining residency may be possible. But you can't bank on sponsorship just for doing unskilled seasonal labor. Partner in other visas. There are some other limited options as well. If you have an Australian partner, you can apply for a partner visa. Or if you invest a large sum of money in Australia and start a business, you may be eligible for a business visa. But again, normal farm labor alone does not make you eligible for these. You need to meet strict criteria based on skills, qualifications, investment funds, or relationships. Key takeaways on sponsorship. Employer sponsorship for farm work is very limited. Don't believe overblown promises. Working holiday visas are the easiest option for backpackers doing farm labor, but they don't lead to permanent residency. If you want to move to Australia more long-term, you'll need legit qualifications and experience in skilled farm occupations. Be very cautious of dodgy visa agents making big promises. Farms won't jeopardize their license to sponsor for casual work. Talk to an immigration lawyer to understand your options clearly before committing time and money. Conclusion. So in summary, mates, if you want to work on Australian farms and road trip this beautiful country, the working holiday visa is hands down the way to go. Just be realistic that it likely won't lead to permanent residency on its own. If you have dreams of emigrating to Australia more permanently, your best bets are gaining qualifications in skilled farm occupations or getting established work experience that farms are genuinely lacking in locals. I hope this brutally honest guide clears up some of the misconceptions floating around social media. Let me know if you have any other questions. I'm happy to help with sensible advice. That's a wrap for today. Stay safe, be legal, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers!